So my name is Amar Jyot Singh. I'm talking to you from Edmonton, and I'm talking to uh, Kabul Khan in Afghanistan. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me, tell me about yourself a little bit so that I can understand your background. I know you have been referred by my good friend Penny Shannon from yes. uh, from uh, Dubai. And uh, that's why I, I, I will help you as much as I can. So go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, yes, sir. My, my background uh, uh, was uh, Air Force pilot. And uh, uh, I was trained uh, in the United States uh, four times, 2009, 2010, 2013, 14, and 15. 18 four times uh, to the United States for the C-130 training mm -hmm. and now and now I am retired uh, uh, I retired in July I, I in July yeah and before retire uh, I was the C-130 pilot the Mazari Sharif uh, wing commander and uh, and now I am retired you know, no uh, job power uh, in uh, my life, my family life, my uh, son's life, uh, all my family uh, is on risk, you know, on danger. And I cannot move outside and walk uh, uh, anywhere I want to go, uh, also my son's. Uh, cannot uh, 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 walk outside and also cannot uh, go to school to college because of the treatment you know yeah and uh, and i talk with uh, my uh, uh, teacher mrs pinney and uh, uh, she told me that uh, you should that i should uh, contact with you uh, to uh, do the paperwork, uh, all the process, and uh, to get out of Afghanistan uh, with my family. And uh, that was the, the reason uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you, contact to you. And, uh, and the case uh, uh, was the treatment and the security and uh, 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 just the uh, you know the situation of Afghanistan and uh, that was the the reason I wanted to uh, yeah, uh, to immigrate from here to Canada. I have to ask you some questions and then you can tell me the answers. Do you have the pilot license valid still or it is expired? Uh, I have uh, all the certificates I, I got uh, in the United States. Uh, the certificates, the language uh, certificate uh, diploma. Uh, yes, I do have. Were you flying for the uh, Air Force or were you flying for the commercial flights in Afghanistan? No, no, uh, Air Force, Afghan Air Force. For the Air Force, okay. How, yes. how old are you? Excuse me? What is your age? Yeah, age uh, 56. Okay, and what is your education? Do you have a bachelor's degree or master's degree? I do have uh, my bachelor degrees, uh, which is uh, the Afghan uh, Air Force University or Aviation Academy. Uh, I have that uh, diploma. And uh, after that, when I went to United States and I, I have all the certificates uh, from 2009, 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2018. Okay. Your, your US visa is still valid? Excuse me? Can you understand my English? Yeah, I understand your English. Yeah. 
Is your US visa still valid? Uh, you know, uh, when uh, we were sent to the United States, that was uh, official passport, you know, uh, which was given by the minister, foreign minister of uh, affairs, and that was official passport. And after uh, we got back to Afghanistan, and the passport. Uh, would be uh, taken by the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, I have the copies, yes, the visa copies, the passport copies from uh, 2014, 13, 14, and uh, 2009. I have the passport for the 2009, and for 1315, I have the uh, copy of the visa in the passport. Do you have any visa in your regular passport at present? Uh, I have uh, uh, not official passport because, you know, when you are uh, official uh, uh, worker at the government and when uh, you were sent to foreign countries and you will be given uh, the official passport. I, I don't have the official passport, only I have one uh, official passport, which uh, was the first trip to United States, uh, and that was 2009. And the rest of uh, passports, uh, you know, the, uh, those were digital passports, and whenever we uh, got back home and uh, the passport would be taken uh, back to the minister uh, ministry of foreign affairs and i have the copies you are all copies. i think you are not understanding my question do you have your regular passport with you yes yes regular passport yes do you have any visa in your regular passport no i just uh, uh took the new regular passport okay got it so uh just just listen carefully uh what i'm about to tell you so that you can make up your own decisions for future plans to okay to uh canada canada does not have a immigration program for people like you because of your age you have mm -hmm. crossed the Cross the age limit to apply for immigration on a point based system. So you will not be able to apply for PR directly under what is called express entry here because of your lack of advanced education and also of your overage. So that's the problem. Uh, so Canada is out of, uh, you know, bounds for you. If you have. If you have a threat to your life, if you have a threat to your family, in Afghanistan, and if you have a visa to travel to Canada or to US, then you can come to these countries and apply for a political asylum in US or a refugee system in Canada. And based on the threat assessment, they will be able to process you as a potential refugee uh, from Afghanistan. So that is uh, one way of immigrating to uh, any of these countries. Uh, yeah. The second way is if you, based on your piloting skills, if you can get a job offer anywhere in the US or Canada, that will allow you to apply for a work permit and then bring yourself later on or even simultaneously bring your family to these countries. So let me just summarize one more time. So there are only two ways for you to legally uh, come to US or Canada. Either you have a job offer from any employer in the US and Canada that will help you get the work permit uh, in any of these countries, enabling you to bring your family, or you have your visa, a traveling visa, a visitor visa to either Canada or US independently, that means on your own. And then once you come to these countries, when you come to the airport, or you can do it at the airport or you can do it even later on. You can apply for political asylum 
or a refugee uh, determination in Canada, and then they will be able to determine if the threat is credible. They make their own determination. It's called refugee status determination. And then they will be able to say yes or no that you can live permanently with immigration in that country. So these are the only two ways. There are no, no other magic solutions for, for you in your situation. Do you, do you, have you understood what I said? Yeah, yeah, I got all your points. <coughs> okay. And uh, what uh, questions do you have for me? Uh, what is the age uh, line uh, for uh, immigra immigrants? Well, in, in Canada, the point system gives you points uh, based on your age, education, experience, and English language, and those things. But points max out uh, at the age which is less than 35. And you are, you are 20 years late. Uh, if you were between 30 and 34 with a master's degree and high English, you could have possibly succeeded in the point-based system. Uh, but yeah. you are quite over the hill, so to say, as far as the, the age is concerned in Canada. Plus, you do not have a uh, high advanced English, and that's also a matter of concern uh, in our point system. You need high English, you need low age, you need at least a sizable number of experience in your skill. So the combination of all of those uh, do not at present apply to you. Uh, that, that's how you are out of that loop. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about uh, my uh, sons? And uh, they are under uh, 35. Your son is under 35? Yeah, uh, 30, 29, 27. What's, what is this? How many, how many sons you got? I uh, have five sons here. And uh, all educated. Uh, the the fifth one uh, is uh, seven years old, and the other uh, four are uh, 18, 20, 25, 27, 28, like that. Okay, okay, so hold on. So the youngest one is seven years old, the eldest one is around 35. Uh, under, uh, yeah, uh, the... What what is the education of what is the education of the son who is around 34-35? Uh, graduated from uh, Lyle Political College. Where is this college? Uh, Herat College, Herat in University. In Afghanistan. Yeah, the oldest is uh, graduated from Herat University, uh, Lyle Political College. Yeah. Does, and, he have, does he have some work experience? Uh, yes, yes. How many and years? Now, and now he works uh, at the IOM, uh, uh, one of the UN uh, branch at the immigration organization. Uh, uh, That's right. That's right. So he yeah. can he can independently qualify. He can he can qualify for point based system on his own. So he needs. Uh, as I said earlier, he needs English language. He has to take the English language test, IELTS. He has to prove that he has skilled experience. He has to get his degrees assessed from Canada. And of course, based on his age, then we look at how much points he has. And hopefully he has sufficient points. If he does, he will get called in for immigration. If not, then he stays where it is. Now, he is working for... IOM and IOM is an organization that deal with refugees who are traveling from that country to different parts of you know US and Canada and other countries. So they are familiar with the refugee system. I would urge you to contact you to contact IOM and talk to them about the refugee process and get full information about what is the definition of refugee, how does one qualify for becoming a refugee, and what is the process within that within that zone. There are two ways to become refugees in, in Canada. Let's talk only about Canada, not of the US. Uh, in Canada, you can become a refugee by, by the determination which is made outside Canada through organizations like UN, 
or you can apply for refugee status when somebody arrives in Canada on a, on any visa, or sometimes people don't even have a visa. When they arrive at the airport, they claim refugee uh, status. So, but I think you should uh, you should get to know about the refugee uh, system by contacting IUM and United Nations HCR office, which may be in Afghanistan or possibly in Pakistan somewhere. So you need to contact them and find out about the refugee status determination process so that you are familiar. As far as your son is concerned, if he does not qualify for express entry, uh, alternatively, he can choose to be a advanced student in Canada. Maybe he can come to Canada to study for a master's degree in uh, anything that he wants to study. Uh, and he becomes a student, that means he gets more education in Canada and after two years and then he gets a work permit and then later on eventually he will get the permanent immigration but it will take some time we're looking at about between four to five years but finally he will so but it requires he, he has to take an English language test he has to show some money uh, cost uh, you know always is a factor in uh, in universities the universities are charging close to depending on the course, could be around eighteen to $20,000 a year, plus living expenses. You are looking at, on an average, to show funds close to $30,000 Canadian dollars in your bank account to qualify for a student status from, you know, Canadian embassy, you know, from Afghanistan where you're applying from. So that is always a factor, but many students uh, who come to Canada, they eventually will find a way to become PR. It is all you know, how how they, what they study and what job they do. Okay. Uh, and my, my each son uh, should uh, uh, do the paperwork uh, by their own. That's right. Uh, everybody, as far as student is concerned, everybody is independent, uh, independent uh, student. That means it is not connected to any brothers or sisters or two, or you are the the applicant is just on his own. Okay. But of course, but of course, the big question is where will you bring all the money from? Where is the money? Yeah. So that's a, that's a big question. So I I think I will I will come back to my original uh, proposal to you. I I think if you if you get a visa, a traveling visa to US or Canada, you can do this on US also, by the way, not only in Canada. If you get to go to US, uh, you can always claim a threat to your life in US, and then the US uh, political asylum system will decide uh, about the credibility of your claim. And in due pro, it takes some time. I mean, it's not like within a day or two. Sometimes people are paying waiting for the hearing, you know, meeting with the judge. Uh, it can close to take about maybe one year or longer. I know some people who are waiting after successive hearings for many years, five to 10 years also. But till that time, you are in US, you are working, you have a employment authorization, you are making some money, at least, you know, you are surviving till the time the decision is pending. Yeah. And uh, I had the uh those chances four times when uh, I was sent to the United States. But uh, you know that uh, four times uh, I was sent for, for official training and I, I, I had not wanted to use uh, those chances because uh, that's I fine. was official. Yeah. That's, that, that's OK. That's OK. You should not. That's fine. I, I, I congratulate you on not, uh, you know, possibly had to abuse that official trip because you were sent on a training, you were sent on an official assignment, so I think that's that's a good step. But now on your regular passport, you need a you need a U.S. visa to travel to U.S. Maybe you are going there to meet somebody or to conduct some personal, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, but you need you need a official you need a, uh, not say official, but you need uh, a visa in your passport to travel to this country. And later on, when you reach US, you can decide, you, can, you should talk, when you go to US, you should meet 
some US immigration lawyers in that city and then you can discuss your claim with him first uh, because there are many lawyers there to grab your money and you know whether your claim is substantial or not uh, you know possibly you know use some frivolous uh, reasons to find uh, find a reason to apply and then you know just waste your time but if you're if if you have sufficient evidence that people are trying to kill you in Afghanistan your life is under threat and people uh, are just uh, you know just not uh, you know making your life life your government and, and the other law enforcement in Afghanistan is not protecting you uh, and if you have evidence if you can prove it then it is very likely good chance for you, for them to give you permanent immigration in US leading to green card uh, for you and your dependent family that means in US it is less than 21 so 21 a single and unmarried less than 21 all family members including your wife will become green card holders in time okay <clears throat> yeah and uh, if uh, one of the family members is already in the United States or uh, some friends in Canada, uh, can they uh, send us invitation? Uh, oh yeah. People? Oh, yeah. Who's, who is in US? Who, who's who's your family relative or member in who can send you invitation? Yeah, he can uh, send us uh, invitation. Who is that person? Yeah, my oldest son is in the United States. Oldest? Uh, okay. Yeah. My fourth son. Yeah. So the fourth, the fourth son is in the US. Okay. And uh, what is his uh, status there? Is he has? Does he have green card? Uh, he just uh, uh, got his uh, citizenship. How did he get his citizenship? Yeah, he was a uh, uh, translator with the United oh. States military gotcha. here in Afghanistan. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, and uh, after the... Uh, got it through special special provisions for people who have helped the U.S. Uh, forces. Uh, so yeah. yeah, ask him to send you an invitation or something. You know, maybe he can send you an affidavit of sponsorship or support. So uh, at least you have a reason to go and visit your... Um, with your son and later on when you visit there uh, if they give you the visa they will likely give you visa for let's say 10 years multiple or five years multiple and typically you get a stay for six months entry at the at the u.s airport once you go there do not be hasty in applying for political asylum i think you should go there first and, and meet a lot of people spend about a month or two uh, and then understand the refugees, uh, the political asylum system, as it's called in U.S. And before you do even uh, asylum application, I think you should talk to uh, some employers in uh, in U.S. Maybe somebody is willing to give you a job based on your pilot skills and your military experience or some other things that you can do. If somebody is able to offer you a job, then there's no need to even apply for refugee uh, system. And uh, maybe they can sponsor you for uh, not an H-1B visa, but like something like a H-2B visa for you, and that will help you out uh, at least uh, in in the short term. Yeah. And uh, what about uh, if someone uh, uh, is uh, eager to to get uh, to get married with, and uh, she can uh, can she? Uh, 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 take us uh, from here to uh, to the United States or wait, Canada. Wait a second, you are already married. Yeah. So wh wh who's where? Where is this marriage question coming from? Marriage for what? Marriage for whom? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm. I could not understand. Many people. Uh, yeah. Many many uh, people. Uh, when uh, they wanted to uh, get out of Afghanistan and go to the United States or Canada, and they got married with uh, one of uh, uh, U.S. lady, and then uh, she uh, sent visa for them. Okay, wait, 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 just a minute. Wait. So you are you are already married right now. You have a wife in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
if you already have a wife in Afghanistan, how can you marry twice? You cannot. Marriage is all for people who are eligible to marry. People who are already married cannot marry twice at the same time. This is called uh, uh, polygamy or bigamy. So that is not allowed. Second, uh, all marriages done with the purpose of just for immigration itself are, of course, are illegal as far as immigration is concerned. And don't mm -hmm. forget that you will be investigated, you will be interviewed. If the visa officers discover that your marriage is made just for the intention of getting a green card, then they, mm -hmm. will, they will very likely refuse your <laughs> application and then you are back to zero. So I would not recommend that you do that. You are already married. I think stay out of it. People who are not married, like your son possibly, who is with you in Afghanistan, if they find a genuine spouse, uh, somebody, you know, with a genuine relationship, not not just for the green card itself, but for genuine yeah. genuine relationship, yes, that's uh, that's a family sponsorship, yes, you know, sure, you, you can exercise that option. Yeah, then uh, the only option is uh, my son to, uh, to send me, to sponsor me or to send me uh, That's right. invitation. That's right. Yeah. That's, and then you go and I, I think I strongly urge you first before you, you take any hasty step of anything, I think you should go to US and then, uh, you know, check things out for, let's say, a month or two, talk to employers and talk, talk to different immigration lawyers about the asylum system and then understand, meet other people, meet other Afghani people uh, who came before you and they applied for asylum, find out uh, what has been the treatment to their case, what questions were asked to them, whether, whether they have been successful or not, whether they have been refused or not. I think then you make up your mind. Yeah. And, and recently one of my friends uh, who was a pilot, and he was uh, sent to the United States for uh, for commercial training okay. to get a to get a pilot license, commercial license. Yeah. And he's, and then he uh, skipped to Canada, and he spent uh, three years in Canada. And after three years, uh, his family, all, all his family, was approved. And uh, he just uh, came back to Afghanistan uh, a month ago and took all his family went uh, to the. So, to so we don't. Yeah. Uh, let me let me give you my response to this uh, situation. All right. So we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know the. We don't know the criteria. We don't know the factor he used. Very likely that maybe he also applied for refugee in Canada. It is very possible that he was determined to be credible and his claim was found to be acceptable to the Canadian uh, immigration system. And when he got the refugee, then the whole family could come here. So that is a possibility. I'm not saying that that is not available to you, but to be able to do that, you need to actually be in Canada. All right. So yeah. you need yes. a visa to travel. As I said earlier, you need a yes. visa to travel You to get yeah. out of get out of Afghanistan, you need a visa, whether it's a US visa or Canada visa, you decide which one is easier for you. So you need yeah. a visa to fly out. Yeah, first I should uh, get to Canada or to the United States and then uh, I can offer uh, uh, for my family. Yeah. And, and then after the process is done. Let me, let me ask you, let me ask you something else. Mm -hmm. And this is this is not a immigration related concern, but just a general tip to help you. You are you are a pilot. Why don't you become a commercial pilot? Maybe you can go to Dubai or go to India and become a commercial pilot and you will get a substantial more than average salary. And plus you will be able to be live with your family where you are. So why don't you become a pilot in in the in your country, maybe in where you are? Uh, you know, I have uh, military uh, uh, pilot documents, you know, certificate, diplomas, okay. and the commercial, uh, uh, to be the commercial pilot, they need commercial license. You know? well, that, that is what I'm saying, that you should go to any commercial flight school 
go to yeah. any country go to america go to australia go to canada go to europe go to any commercial flying school and become yeah. a student and become a student and complete your lessons and maybe in the span of three months four months six months i do not know how many months in a reasonable span you will become a commercial pilot and when you become yeah. a commercial pilot you will be able to work for any airline anywhere in the world. And plus, you will be able to have a salary and support your family and children. Instead of running around from US to Canada or Canada to US and applying for you know, different miscellaneous jobs and working minimum wage, I think it is a better sense to become a commercial flying pilot where you are and then yeah. be able to get the salary and become established. What do you think? You know, you know, it needs uh, sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars. I know. Uh, I to, know. To get... but, but your son, but your son is a U.S. citizen. Maybe he can help you out financially. It is just a matter of few months. Eventually, when you become a pilot, you will be able to recoup that loan and give it back to him. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. Why do you want to waste your experience? You have some. Uh, quite precious experience of flying, especially uh, in the in the U.S. U.S. Army. Uh, why not put this experience to advantage and become a commercial pilot? But it maybe in you you should. I think because of your history in U.S., maybe you should go to Florida or some other place in in U.S. and and take lessons in commercial flying, and they will they will happily give you the st study visa because you already proved your history with them. Yeah, just uh, mm, uh, the money we. Uh, I know. We, you know they, this is an investment in your life and future, brother. Look, I yeah. know money is always, but think of the salary that you will get once you become a pilot in US or somewhere else. You know, wherever you become the pilot, I think I'm not an expert on on flying. Up. I can tell you that. Look, uh, you know, pilots. Is, you can check on Google how much salary do they make, entry level salary, wherever they are. I think you can easily make close to 90,000, 90,000, 100,000 dollars a year, and you will be able to pay off that loan and that grant from your from his son, maybe in one or two years. And think of also how successful and happy you will be, no matter where you live, whether you live in US or whether you live in Europe, whether you live in Dubai, perhaps or maybe in India or some other country or even Afghanistan, wherever you are, you will have a decent salary and plus you have flexibility to move around and fly around. I, I think it's it's a, this is what I will do if I were you, but of course you can take your own decision. But if I were you, I will do something like this. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, prepared my uh, uh, certificates, all the flight training certificates. And probably um, I will take these uh, certificates, all documents to the commercial uh, company next week. And we will see what happens. Well, sure, that's fine. Do you have do you have any more questions about US and Canada to me? Do you have any more questions before we conclude this? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I wish you uh, best of luck and and, and, and for, you know, uh, I have good wishes for you for your future planning. Say hello to your family from my side. If you are in Hi. Canada any day, you can always come and visit me in Edmonton, Alberta, where I am. Uh, say hello to my good friend Penny, uh, who was, who is your teacher? Who, is she still your teacher? Uh, no, no. Oh, when, she's, she's, uh, okay. Yeah, when she, she was in Afghanistan, she was our teacher. Good. She 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 said uh, very good things and uh, highly, uh, you know, uh, very very of, of of a good opinion about you. Uh, so I um, I uh, congratulate you on your quest for you know better future. Uh, I've already to, told you what is the reality. Uh, there's a lot of hype on Google and other places. A lot of immigration consultants over promising and then trying to take your money. But I think I have given you the best uh, accurate assessment of what I see about your background in your future uh, in US and Canada. So uh, make your decisions uh, with, with awareness and with uh, full knowledge. OK. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank, for your time. Bye. Thank you.
باي